Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and once again we are living with the children of a dead Earth. Basically playing through a few more of the missions to get uh, give you an idea of what really the, the game is all about. So yeah, uh, rendezvous with a research spacecraft with very low delta V. Uh, Nippon Prime, they are basically space Japanese. Good to see that their space program is still going. And so here we go, around uh, the asteroid Pallas. Pallas is the second asteroid ever discovered. It was called a planet when it was first discovered, and I guess technically it is still a minor planet. So one of these is the spacecraft, and it has 110 meters per second of delta V. So I gotta make like a Kerbal and make this rendezvous happen. Obvious thing to do is to go out to Apple. Apple Apps, Apple Palace, I don't know what we'd call it, Apple Astron. Slow it down so that we get a, an osculate, we get a slight touching orbit, an osculating orbit. That's not really technically what an osculating orbit is, but it does actually bear some resemblance. Unfortunately, this thing is going to get there slightly before me. So that's 4.77 meters per second to get down there, but then to circularize the orbit and match its orbit, 27.3 meters per second. I'm actually kind of wondering why Pallas is used, because Pallas has a pretty high inclination and pretty high eccentricity, so it's actually relatively inaccessible for spacecraft. I guess you would have to burn up all your fuel. Okay, so we've got this thing, we're in the same orbit, it's in front of us, so I'm just going to slow down my spacecraft and paradoxically make it chase the spacecraft in front of it. Yes, that's why orbital mechanics confuses lots of people. Remember that if you're in orbit and you slow down, you will start catching up on objects in front of you. Unless you fall into the atmosphere, in which case you will burn up. But Pallas doesn't have an atmosphere. I mean, it has a rocky surface of some sort, I guess. Um, I'm wondering if Pallasites are related to it. Okay, move around, move around. Mm, that's one orbit. Now let's see how close we get on the next one. So I'm just going to mouse around and see how close we get to our target. And if there's something we can do to make sure that we... Yeah, you see, so I'm actually going... I'm going too low here, so I need to add a little kick of my delta V or push my orbit up a little so that when we come around the other side we come around at the same time so that oh there we go can join fleet it's gonna cost me 1.93 meters per second and yeah totally beat this level time a running running the time and Orbit! The crew was starting to get concerned we'd be left floating around Palace. Uh, next time we're in an allied starport, drinks are on me. Incoming transmission. Okay, straight into this level. Uh, basically what's going on here is I am in a nuclear weapons capable spacecraft, but I have no Delta V, I'm stuck at the station. All I can do is launch missiles. Now, the good news is, the missiles can fly their own course. So I'm going to launch four of those and I guess like 20 of these Striker nuclear missiles. So we have Devastator and Striker. I'm going to create like a little fleet out of them. So that should be, here we go, 20 Striker for Devastator. And then I got to move it onto a collision course and encounter with the target. Here we go. So, you could be very aggressive here because we are orbiting Eros. Eros is a small near-Earth asteroid, and uh, actually it's the place where Near Shoemaker landed. Rather timely that they should come up because, of course, uh, Rosetta just crash-landed onto uh, its comet. Near Shoemaker, they decided that it was coming to the end of their mission, so they thought they would try and soft land it, and they did. It wasn't designed to land, but, you know, of course, rocket scientists, they can solve all sorts of problems. And so they landed it on its solar panels, and then they actually flew it again just to show it was still capable of flight. Anyway, I'm just throwing in a big edit here because I'm creating many, many flights of missiles, and it's pretty tedious. So there we have, like, Four flights of missiles in flight. They're all heading and bearing down on the enemy, and now they encounter it. So these are nuclear weapons. 
It's a missile schooner. The problem with nuclear weapons is if you launch too many, they tend to blow each other up when they explode. This is a common misconception that nuclear missiles exploding next to other nuclear missiles can make them explode, just like a conventional explosive chain reaction. No, if you uh, go up to, if you hit a nuclear weapon hard enough, you will probably break it rather than make it explode. They are very sensitive, very complicated devices. But I am a very sensitive and complicated device, and I am letting the time run forwards now. Here we go. We're going to close to within their. I don't know what is that weapons range. There we go. There's the defenses coming. Yes. I don't know if we hit it. We hit their cannons. Oh darn, darn. Okay. Well, so much for the devastator. Should have probably launched more devastator missiles. So did we? I don't even know if we did any any damage there but we have we have another wave coming in next so let's just click run time forwards watch them come in okay once more into the breach uh, gonna tar oh nuclear rocket is disabled actually so we've disabled their nuclear missile launcher fantastic and we've disabled their nuclear rocket so they're pretty much dead in the water means I can do with them as I please, as long as I please want to hit them with nuclear weapons, because otherwise I don't really have any ways of reaching out across the void of space and touching them. Brace for weapons! There we go. I'm sorry, your sacrifices will be noted. Ha! Huh. Okay. I'm not sure we did any more damage there, but that certainly looked pretty bright. And I think the Devastators have once again all been wiped out. Still, your sacrifice has been noted. We now have two more waves still in flight. Run time forward. Come on. Oh, three flights. Three things in flight. There we go. Time for the missile schooner to be introduced to another set of waves of missiles. So I'm just going to do full homing here. Homing missiles, and where is the target? Oh look, it's nice they actually have a rendered version of Nier that looks, or sorry, not Nier, but um, Eros. That looks pretty good. Missile schooner, we've targeted everything more or less. If I can take out the radiators, then that should have a knock-on effect of making the power generation very hard. Okay, weapons fire, weapons fire, and... Oh, excellent! Been disarmed, has lost power generations. That is... Oh, and all enemies are no longer a threat. Means I can just throw another wave of nuclear missiles at them and they won't be able to do anything about it. Honestly, I'm going to say this game seems to be heavily driven by luck. You can get a lucky shot and win a battle. You can get a ton of poor shots and lose the battle. Really, the game design doesn't feel like a real-time strategy game. It feels more like a puzzle game with physics and nuclear weapons installed. And, you know, who doesn't want nuclear weapons in their games? Well, maybe Mario? I don't know. It, point is, it's not really set up like your regular real-time strategy kind of missions. It's more like you are going to very carefully plan everything out, and if it doesn't work, you're just going to keep retrying. Despite destroying the enemy ship, I am still not out of this. I need to somehow make sure that my station and my ship do not get hit too badly by these striker nuclear missiles. So, so we are going to launch decoys. And then hopefully my gun system starts kicking in very quickly. Because I would really prefer that their nuclear weapons did not actually... Ooh, what was that? Was that a nuke that sh blew up near me? Whoa! I'm hearing my hull, like, creak! Whoa, don't die! Ooh, lots of explosions! I'm thinking we survived! Woohoo! Victory! Good call! Close call there, Admiral! Our shipyard workers are safe and our prototype has survived and there's still nuclear missiles flying around! I like how they're, s they're saying, oh, we're all safe! We're just standing here watching nuclear weapons explode because we're engineers and we get very easily impressed by anything that makes a big bang. But I need actual rewards. Okay, here we go. Time elapsed. 2.57. That was pretty fast. 
Capsule ships alive? 100%. Unscathed? Zero. I guess I didn't quite manage it. I only got a silver medal, and I'm not sure if that really matters, but... Okay. Rendezvous rescue craft to a disabled ship in Mercury's fourth Lagrange point before it runs out of food. Hmm. That's not something you hear every day. Mercurian Lagrange points. I actually wonder how stable the Mercurian Lagrange points are because uh, it's kind of an... Well, because Mercury's in an eccentric orbit. Anyway, look, you can see it's in a tadpole orbit. This game is basically showing Kerbal Space Program that it can do three-body problems. So I need to get to it and I'm initially orbiting Mercury. Oh yeah, it's telling me to use this as my frame of reference. And there it is there. It's kind of zipping around back and forth. That's what it looks like relative to Mercury, right? So we're in the Merc relative to Mercury status. Okay, so it's in front of us in the orbit. That means we need to escape Mercury in the retrograde direction relative to the sun so that we fall down and then fall out. And if we get this just right, we should just float towards it and hopefully we have enough Delta V to perform a rendezvous. How much Delta V do we have? 21 kilometers per second! Ha! Yes, I, I think... <laughs> I don't think we're gonna have a problem with this. It's just a question of whether I really decide to optimize this significantly. Okay, so I'm basically gonna create my orbital node there to slow my orbit down and maybe go inwards a little. Now that says kind of falling. Now the orbit is being plotted relative to Mercury However, I think I may have chosen incorrectly. I want to move this node around, but the game doesn't let me move orbital node, so I have to basically recreate it there. I'm going to do that. So we're just going to go straight backwards, because the amount of delta V we're putting into this is huge. Therefore, we don't need to correct for hyperbolic deflection as we're leaving Mercury's sphere of influence. Oh, look! As we mouse over, we get to see what the target is. So, I think if I just keep doing this, three kilometers per second for uh, oh and actually there with 15 kilometers per second of we can perform a rendezvous so that's us completed the mission it takes one month but can we get this down a little because of course if you've been seeing after these missions the game has been rating me based upon my performance and some of them, I don't actually know how some of the missions could be done with those parameters, but whatever. They're one month, so I'm slowing things down actually here, but reducing the delta V. So one month, 27 days, 7.88 kilometers per second. So I have brought things down from being about 18 kilometers per second to a little... Yeah, I'm thinking we're in roughly the right thing. There we go, 7.45... You know what? Let's... Do I, do I really want to tune this a little more? I think not. I think I'm just going to join the RFP gunship using... Wait, it says 9 kilometers per second. Eh, whatever. It's now telling me more stuff. We have the intercepts. Now we just need to... I believe we just need to run time forwards. Uh, except running it at 1 hour is going to take a really long time. So let's run 6 days of orbit. Look at us swinging inside the sun's orbit and beginning to catch up whereupon our navigation team will have to work very hard to rendezvous because we're moving pretty fast. I'm sure I could plan this a little better if I was uh, spending, if I wasn't trying to play this in real time to be honest. Uh, I could have a lot of fun really trying to optimize these trajectories. Change the frame of reference. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can see how I'm burning in one direction, then burning the other, and slowly making my correction, and I'm there. Just in time, Admiral. Thanks for the rescue. So, I'm not sure what I did. Do I have? A, was I a fuel tanker? I guess I just needed to rendezvous. I'm glad I didn't have to fly them back. And now we have the Interrami... Ramnian? Interramnian incident? Disable an enemy ship around Interramnia that is mutinied, but do not destroy it. Well, this is unfortunate. One of our warships in orbit around Interramnia has mutinied, imprisoned the captain, and seized control of the ship. We assure you it's an isolated incident 
and not endemic to an entire military or anything like that. So the skipper is the daughter of Senator Chandra, therefore we can't blow up the entire ship to demonstrate, uh, to punish the mutineers, we have to somehow disable the spacecraft, which uh, shouldn't be too hard because I'll just try to make sure I slam all my weapons into bits that don't have people living on them. Uh, okay, we intend to make Rami disappear, so the plan, <laughs> like that, we're like, well, technically, we're just going to make him disappear afterwards, but first you have to pretend that you're rescuing everyone without killing them. Incoming oh, the comedy. In order to precisely disable the enemy ship, I'd recommend doing two things. Disable any of our weapons, or that will do too much damage. Uh, okay, you know, whatever, I'm just going to... First of all, we're orbiting an asteroid, and I have five kilometers per second of Delta V, therefore... What do we have? We have coil guns, flak missiles. I don't think I'll use those. Trail, rail guns, rail guns, coil guns. You know what? Right. So I have, I have a lot of Delta V. So let's just big time go and charge that thing. Or they think they're chasing us around this planet, this little planetoid. I'm gonna turn this around backwards. Listen to that music. That music is like you know full-on ravey stuff. <laughs> it's, it does, all the music in this game does feel a little out of place, I have to say, but whatever. You know, I'm not sure what real space music would be. Okay, oh, I thought that was gonna break out into like proper like hardcore beats, that music. Nope. I'm just gonna try and get the, reduce the Delta V for my, ah, there you see. That's, there's two types of intercept. There's the intercept that requires, you know, uh, lots of flying, and then there's the intercept that pretty much puts you right on the money, so you just do a power slide in there. There we go, we're gonna fly across, and then 251 meters per second, we're gonna drop alongside them, disable that ship. Incoming transmission. You're in command, aren't you the president's kid? Listen to me, stop your attack. This doesn't have to end in violence. All of you people should understand my reasons for doing what I did. Stop the attack and just hear me out. The Republic High Command is lying to you and... <laughs> the transmission's jammed at source, Captain. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna hit the nuclear rocket and their weapons. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure where the crew section is. I should have probably checked that in the briefing. Mousing over isn't showing me where anything is, so... Uh, le yeah, let's hope I kill the important things before I kill the even more important things. There they go! Okay, I'm gonna set... Uh, sh yeah, I'm gonna orient broadside. Now, wait a second. Am I in range? I'm not actually in range. I should pro... Oh, no, I am in range. What's in? I'm in range with? I'm firing my 8mm railgun. I'm damaging their armor, and they're launching decoys, and I've no idea if I'm actually hitting anything good or bad. I've destroyed their green laser. They've lost power generation. Surely it is a matter of time before they die. I should maybe... Let's orient broadside or something else. Oh, look at the laser sh look, oh, not lasers. Railguns. Those are railguns with tracers. They are not... Incoming transmission. What? Okay, that seemed rather easy. Honestly, this game does end up relying a lot on luck to complete the missions. I like, as in, you can get really lucky and complete a mission easily, or you can be really unlucky. Anyway, yeah, I'm still liking Children of a Dead Earth. It's a very niche game, but uh, I am one of the niche players, so I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.